I, I, I was, I was, uh, you know, talking to people about before this happened was that, you know, 2020, like that's kind of a reset. Like it's, it's the start of a new decade. You feel me? It's the start of a new revolution. Twenty two to a hundred years ago, this is the year that women got the right to vote. I think this is the year of prohibition. It was the start of the Harlem Renaissance. Like this, this, this year has a, it has a lot of energy as far as what's going to happen in the next, you know, 60, 70 years, actually. So something like a global pandemic, something like this, like it's not even necessarily that I expected it, but it's more so like I'm not surprised. Like something was about to happen, and now we know what it is, and so now it's going to be like it's an adjustment. It's a, it's a left, it's a right. It's, it's, it's about how you're about to go around the problem because they shut down the streets, so you cannot go through anymore. It, it's, finding, it's finding your way out of no way. Um, and I think that's that's how that that that's how people are going to react, or that's how I hope people are going to react. I hope people are going to to find the positive in this, instead of you know living in what could be a negative situation, if you allow it to be. Um, Definitely. Y'all put me on the spot, so I'm gonna do like a really short poem. Is that cool? That's cool. I. I gotta find it. Um. So, no, no. Give me like two more seconds. All right. So you still call, and I still answer, and I have to wonder if you even remember the last time we talked. How I blew you, being myself. How I don't flinch when you leave anymore. How you can never expect to talk to me again until you do. How I can only ever seem to hold you when I don't try. How I saw him coming, saw you leaving, saw me pulling on you to stay or pulling you apart trying to keep us together. How I felt the day you quit. How you felt the day I quit and took it as a turn to keep reaching out. I have to wonder how we don't really like each other's music, but we love this dance, love dancing around the subject these days, the way you only call me to discuss the elephant in the room how I'm not your favorite him anymore. I guess except when he's a ghost you can only talk about, how now you miss the consistency of my voice, or maybe just the consistency, but not as much as his touch until he doesn't show up, the way you only miss our conversations when I stop trying to have them, but even in your dreams I'm still the solution to the problems they can't solve, and I guess I've always been your handyman, made myself home enough to keep your problems at bay, but baby. You've been letting another man live in you. You don't seem to wonder where that leaves me, a homeless home or an addicted rehab or your favorite hero complex to victim for, a halfway house for your wayward soul, a fixer-upper that you quit on until you need someone who won't quit on you. But I tried to quit on this after you did, and I did for a while until you call. But before I answer, I have to wonder. That wow. right. Yep, that's it. That's I appreciate it. That definitely was kind of poetry that I'm used to from Hassan. Definitely hit you right in the heart and all of that. So definitely appreciate you doing that. Chalet, um, it's on you now in terms of, like I said, if I had a visual, I'd have you do a dance number. But since it's all audio, <laughs> can't have that happen and everything. But what is your take on how this will impact and continue to impact the world and also how will it impact the dance world. But uh, if you just give us your impact on your take on the impact of what we're going through and what you vision happening. Sure. Sure. First, I'm really inspired by everyone so far. It's really a wonderful conversation. And I think there are some really important like words being brought up, like the idea of recalibration that just really resonated with me. I feel like it kind of feels like we're, we're going through such a shift that, that maybe the things that weren't working are going to crumble the fastest. And maybe in some ways there's that hope of this being a wake up call. Um, I do feel like there is going to be a shift of focus. um, Well, hopefully to local businesses and how important it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, at the exact same time, there's going to be almost like more of a sense of global community because if the online resources and the live streaming continues, Like I think about my young career was, you know, after I left New York, I traveled the world to try to access things that I couldn't access on my computer at that time. 
Um, and now I, you know, I, I see all of this information, these resources just expanding um, exponentially. And you can, you know, virtually head to, to Japan or to Israel or to Belgium, um, several of the places I spent a lot of time and um, have access to kind of some of the most innovative things happening in the dance world today. Um, and right now, because of, of the pandemic, a lot of these resources are being offered for free or donation-based because there isn't necessarily a streaming platform accessible yet enough for artists that is about really generating a revenue stream. It's really still about staying connected and sharing information. So I do feel that there is going to be something, um, uh, I don't know, it's asking life is asking something new of us, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that obviously we want to feel that as communities and as countries and as nations that we're really focused on the well-being of others. Um, and obviously dance is a big part of that, a big part of why I do that, that whole sense of wellness um, and the movement language that my, that, that my company does. Um, which kind of makes me also think about I get calls from time to time from people who would have loved to have taken a dance class but don't have access to transportation. So I think about how can we keep this possibility available for people that don't have transportation um, uh, or people who are outside of the area to stay connected um, with the movement form that they um, love from us. And I think about that there's a sense of accessibility happening right now. Um, and I hope that, that the things that are working now will continue because, like you said, there is a crisis mentality. There is that sense of people rushing for solutions and, you know, positive things happening, like some of our environmental health coming back um, and reducing our carbon footprint. But will that just disappear when, when life goes back to normal? I have a feeling people don't want it to go back to normal. I have the feeling that, um, well, some people do, but I have the feeling, especially in the dance world, that there's a sense of let's keep what is working here and let's change the things that weren't um, and let's keep growing through this. Um, so, yeah, I think that I feel hopeful in the midst of the devastation um, that possibly we can put some new infrastructures in place that will benefit more people and be more focused on, on well-being. Um, uh, well, I've got two questions. Well, one of them will throw back to everybody, but first I want to hear Marco's answer as to his take on what's going to happen with the rest of the world. And then the question is somewhat directed to Shali and uh, Hassan, and it's based on something that somebody has told me a long time ago, and I might put Mike and uh, you and my co-host, Dean, on the um, spotlight when I ask the question. But uh, the question to you, Marco, is uh, what is your thought about what's going to happen with the world as we move into a new direction, the post-COVID era, whenever that might be? Yeah. Well, Mark, uh, following Charlie and Hassan and Mike, uh, these are three tough acts to follow. So, you know, I, I don't know how original I can be, but maybe I can aggregate a little bit of, of what I've heard. And the positive message from all three of you makes me feel of a, a moment of self-empowerment. And, 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 Mark, I think you're right. I, I was there on 9-11. I lost a dear friend on the first flight. And there was a sense of camaraderie and we're in it together and brotherhood. Uh, and that vanished way too quickly. So I, I agree with what Hassan and others said, that this is, this is different. By the way, Hassan, you are one powerful uh, artist. I was, I was blown away by what you shared, and, and uh, I'd like to learn more Thank about you. it and hear more. Um, I, I, sure, you got it. I, I think just as we're giving Mother Earth a break, and not releasing the kind of carbon dioxide and pollution that we usually release. I think we as human beings are, are, are less at this moment human doings and more human in downshifting, slowing it down and focusing on what matters. I, I can tell you, I didn't start meditating until a couple years ago. 
after going through a tough time. And everyone told me, oh, you should meditate. You must meditate. Well, shoulds and musts don't really work that much. You've got to come to it from, from your own perspective. And I, I've coupled that over the last couple of months of COVID-19 with taking some wisdom from a 12-step program. Um, and I just share, you know, part of it is an anonymity, right? But there's, there's wisdom that needs to be spread and shared. And there, there are two thoughts that I'd like to express that I've learned from, from these programs. And, and one is putting yourself first is not selfish. Putting yourself first is not selfish. I, it took me decades to learn that lesson. And I, I was people-pleasing, client service for so much of my life. And I think COVID-19, not in a selfish way, but often in an other-focus way that Charlie was saying. By the way, Charlie, if you, did you ever visit the Batsheva Dance Company in Israel? I did, actually. I studied with them. I bet you did. Yeah, we should talk about that offline. I'm familiar oh, with that. Awesome. That's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. But but thinking about the other, but also thinking about ourselves. And I think the the panel and and and, and all of you are mission driven, and in my lexicon, uh, messianic about what we're doing. That we have a purpose. We have a passion. We see the clock is ticking, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't. Most people don't. They see work as drudgery, as punching in and punching out, uh, necessary, just let me get through the day. A lot of people are burnt out, right? And I think that the energy that we all have for what we do, hopefully stuff like that can be contagious. And I'll share one other uh, adage that I've learned from 12-step programs and, and I said this once to a group of people, and I got a little flack from it. I'm curious what you guys think, and it's a little extreme, but it kind of gets to what Hassan was saying. And the, the saying goes, there, there are no victims, only volunteers. What you were talking about, Hassan, about your own perception, how you create your own reality. And yes, a lot of us have such a tough road to hoe. And maybe you remember this, Mark, but I, I'm a mentor to a young African-American man named Maurice Reed Jr. who was in the bloods in Bed-Stuy before people were moving to Bed-Stuy and got caught up in the juvenile justice system. Long story short, he graduated with honors from NYU and has worked at many tech companies and is an absolute superstar. And it's like, you know, he could have played, say, well, you know, feel sorry for himself. He never felt sorry for himself. This kid is amazing. And I just think, I, I hope that people get more resilient, more resourceful, more creative, and more able to love one another and also get what we want out of the short time we have here on planet Earth. So that's, that's yeah, my Jeff, feel. I appreciate that. Now, the question I had to ask both Shali and Hassan, and I've heard this from two different folks, and this is where I'm going to put Mike and Dean and maybe even you, Marco, on the spotlight, is um, I've had friends of mine that tell me, like I said, I mentioned that I did the online uh, dance party thing with Daybreakers, and I'm not claiming to be a great dancer. As a matter of fact, I think I have two left feet. But I've heard this concept that everybody actually – is a good dancer. Everybody can be a great dancer. I don't know if I necessarily believe that. The same with spoken word, that everybody has a poem in them. So my question to you, Shale, and then I'm going to throw it to Hassan on the spoken word side, is do you believe that? Do you think that everybody does have some dance in them, or is there so, are there folks like me that have, uh, in my mind, two left feet, and maybe Mike thinks he's got two left feet, and maybe Dean thinks he's got two left feet, and the same with Marco. I'm not going to put words in their mouth. They can tell me if they think that they actually got suave moves or not. I'm going to pull y'all all into my Shawgar classes now. <laughs> um, I don't so, yes, I do. I really do. I really do believe everyone, everyone is a, a dancer. If you enjoy moving, um, that can be in your mind's eye on a molecular level. It can be physical. There's a lot of different layers that movement happens in. Um, it can be just because you enjoy music, um, and that's kind of how um, that's kind of how we teach. Um, I also feel like, really, I, I value the fact that 
a lot of, of dance forms um, require a lot of athleticism and training. Um, but beyond that, in my own career, what I value more is great teachers, which just teach you how to, that give you that key to open yourself up.